how cute. You don't even need to finish it, you can just start it. Hello friends, welcome back. My name is Monica. If you don't know me, I make content about owning a small business, working 9 to 5, productivity, all these good things. And if you've been watching my videos, you can probably tell I have a little bit of a cold right now. Today, I am making a video about a topic I normally wouldn't talk about on camera. I'm very nervous and excited to make this video because I feel like it could help some people. It could definitely help me. By just making this video. Today we're going to be talking about how to get out of a slump as a small business owner. Now I go through my fair share of slumps in my personal life, my 9 to 5, but especially in my small business life. Something about doing a side hustle just burns me out constantly. However, over the past three years I figured out some tools that help me get through the slump and get out of it. I'm also going to try some new tactics today that I Think will help. Basically, it's January. We're trying to get back on our feet. My last video was about a 2023 reset and how I'm prepping for the new year and just like getting revamped and remotivated for what the year has to come. But January is still the winter time and this is still the main part of the year where I feel super unmotivated to actually like get work done. I just have this huge slump every winter and then I have a few slumps throughout the year whenever I feel a little too burnt out. But hopefully some of the tricks I work on today will help for me in this current slump and also help you for if you ever feel this way. So here's the current state of affairs. I haven't posted on my brand Instagram account since November. It's January 24 today. I also haven't put out a new collection since November. That was my holiday collection, which actually came out a little bit late. So even with that, I was slacking. I haven't done a pop-up all winter, but that was intentional because I knew I wouldn't have like the stamina to get through a winter pop-up. So I haven't met people in person to like revamp my motivation. I've kept my material levels and my inventory levels very low, and I haven't been properly planning upcoming collections that I want to put out throughout the year, so I have nothing much to look forward to. And that's where we're at today. The goal is to get out of the slump, get productive, refine my motivation, get disciplined, because at the end of the day, I do want to continue running this business, and I do want to continue making things and being a crafter. I'm just in a temporary little slump. So let's get right into it. Also, I very much appreciate you all still ordering from my shop throughout the past couple months, even though I haven't been promoting anything on my Instagram or anything, it's really crazy that I'm still getting like a few orders here and there. That means people are watching my YouTube videos and are like still keeping up with my stories on Instagram and like keep wanting to support me even though I'm not like pushing all my products out. So thank you so much for that. This definitely wouldn't have been the case last year. It definitely wasn't the case last year. I remember going through this winter slump that I always go through. Um, and I got no orders for a solid three months. That in and of itself motivates me because I can see the growth in my business and I hope that motivates you to keep going because one day you will get there as well. I hope I don't watch this footage back later and I'm like, I sound disgusting. I get this annual cold in January that comes every single January and it's like nothing crazy. I just get like congested and like get a little bit of a cough. Hopefully it's fine. The first tip I have to get out of a slump is to make something for yourself. Now this is kind of a selfish tip and a little bit niche. If you're a crafter and you hand make goods for your business, a lot of the times you're hand making goods for other people, for people to buy, and not necessarily stuff that you get to keep for yourself. Whenever I'm in a slump, I try to create something for myself because then I get excited that I get to keep something and use something and I don't have to worry about if people will like it, if it's a fragrance that people are into nowadays, if it's like a dress that's trendy right now and people will buy. Like I literally just make whatever I want and that kind of kickstarts my creative juices and after I completely finish that one project, I not only feel super accomplished because I got one thing done, but I also feel like ready to get started on other things, kind of because I proved that I can be creative and I do still have that in me and I can just like go ahead and make other products for my shop. So the thing I'm going to work on for myself is actually a pirate costume, kind of strange. But I am going on a trip in a couple days to Tampa and they have this huge like pirate festival situation. If you're from Tampa, 
let me know. But basically with friends, we're gonna go to this pirate festival and we're all gonna like dress up as pirates <laughs> and it sounds fun. It sounds like a costume that would be like a one use kind of thing. So I decided to make my own costume with thrifted fabrics and like remnant fabrics. I haven't put out clothing on my shop in a while, mainly because I haven't been able to like trust my own like ideas and I just feel like my clothes aren't good enough. So I decided to let that go and just make something for myself because normally when I make things for myself, I don't feel as much pressure. So here's what I have done so far. I get this um, little corset number. I used the Transformations by Tracy sewing pattern to make this little belt corset. Hmm. I think this is remnant dead stock fabric from Mood Fabrics, which I haven't like found a use for, but it looks really pretty in this corset. It'll look better once I try it on. I use this leftover ribbon and leftover bias tape. And then underneath that, I'm going to put on this little milkmaid top. How cute. This sewing pattern is from This Is Kachi, I think is how you pronounce her name. I completely just like scrapped the back portion of the pattern and just made the shirt back because I thought that would look more with the style of pirate. <laughs> And I did an off-the-shoulder sleeve and like a little poof sleeve because I saw that on Jack Sparrow and I was like, that's piratey. So basically just the front piece is like from the sewing pattern from this Kachi. It looks very cute so far. The last step is to make a skirt, like a ruffle skirt, kind of like this picture that I've been inspired by. I'm going to finish the skirt and then hopefully I'll feel super accomplished after making that and we'll see. Honestly, even just setting up my sewing space and putting my serger and my sewing machine in their like working positions just like gets me really excited. I haven't been doing that much sewing work because honestly, I've had the worst imposter syndrome. The more I get into like making my own designs and looking up other people's designs, I just feel not that good. Like I didn't study fashion so i'm like looking everything up as i run into issues and that makes the process really slow and it also means that my designs just like aren't gonna be as good because um i just don't have the experience so then i get really insecure when i'm trying to sell people my designs but in reality i don't even think they're that good so making something for myself is good because i'm not judging myself i'm like honestly this looks fine looks cute, looks piratey, that's all that matters. And I don't have to worry about what anyone else thinks because it's just for me. All right, let's get surgeon. Okay, part one done. Okay, I am almost done with the costume. So at the bottom of the skirt, I need to add one more ruffle, which is why it looks like kind of weird at the bottom. But otherwise, it's looking cute. Okay, 
so now that I finished that project, I feel pretty good. I re-familiarized myself with my sewing machine, my sewing tools. I feel like when I'm in a slump, I just get very overwhelmed with the number of tasks I need to do and just like how much energy each of these tasks takes up in my life. So that's why I stay in the slump because I get a little too scared and overwhelmed to just get started. So I'm making this one little outfit for myself. It makes me get really excited for the event. I also got a cute new little dress and corset out of it. And more importantly, I like revamped my motivation and got over the feeling of being overwhelmed by just creating one piece. So if you're feeling like, oh, it sounds like too much energy to make 100 candles or to go out to the fabric store and buy like 20 yards of fabric and all those big numbers just seem like super overwhelming, I recommend just starting with one thing. Just make one little thing, the simplest thing. You don't even need to finish it, you can just start it. And just by starting the act of getting back into productivity and back into your small business, will definitely kickstart the rest of your motivation. Now another reason I'm in a slump is because I just feel like I haven't had any good ideas <laughs> in the recent months, which obviously isn't true. I have a ton of ideas and I know some of them are good, but it's just like hard to, it's hard to pick an idea and run with it without knowing if people are actually going to buy that product without testing. There's a lot of uncertainty that comes with running a small business because you don't know what people want. You don't know how well your stuff's going to do. You don't know if like buying new materials is going to be worth the investment. So that's usually what puts me in a slump too, just like the uncertainty of it all and also just lack of confidence. So what I'm going to do is just make a brand new product. Because I'm going on a trip, um, I'm visiting my boyfriend's friends in Tampa, I decided to make them a little candle because I thought that'd be a nice thing to do. So I made this candle, it's made with an old vessel and a new fragrance actually that I ordered a few weeks ago. I ordered a bunch of samples from Candle Science and this is actually my tester for one of the scents and I really like it so I'm just going to gift it to them. But the thing I've been having trouble with is coming up with a name for this candle because that needs to be like kind of creative, it needs to be eye-catching, I need to design the label for it, the colors need to work out, I need to print it out, I need to design it on my Cricut and Adobe Illustrator. So it's like a bunch of pretty annoying tasks <laughs> and little tasks if you actually think about it. But I'm basically just going to look through my list of ideas or rack my brain for a little idea for what to put as this candle's um, like name and the design of the packaging. As soon as I come up with an idea, I'm going to run with it. I'm just going to design it. I'll tweak it if I want to. I'm going to print it out, I'm going to put it on there, and that's going to be it. Otherwise, I get stuck in the process of being a perfectionist and trying to figure out if like, I should change the font, if I should make anything bigger or smaller, the shade of blue, darker, lighter, and it's just like a vicious cycle of me not making decisions. The goal right now is to get out of the slump and to just get over myself and make things. So I'm just going to run with whatever the first idea <laughs> like I have is and put it on this thing and call it a day. is the design I ended up coming up with. I really like the blue. I was gonna try a bunch of different shades, but I was like, no, let me not overthink it. I called it Sandalwood Musk and High Tide. I really like that because the actual fragrance from Candle Science is called um, Dark Sea. I was deciding between Dark Sea and High Tide. I like Dark Sea better, but it still kind of smelled like the ocean to me, so I added that High Tide part because I 
thought those words sound good. And the bass notes are sandalwood and musk, so I added that in. I think it sounds good. It's like more of a masculine-y, like stereotypically masculine scent. It's a little bit different than what I normally have in my shop. I normally do sweeter like scents, fruity scents, and like things that smell like foods. So th this should be like a fresh kind of product. I'm just gonna put it on a little candle. It's always the most stressful part. Hmm. I think it looks pretty good. I gotta chop off the top part of this, but it smells really good. You're right where I left you last night. It is clearly the next day. I went to the gym, I showered, ate breakfast. My next tip for getting out of a slump regarding your small business is taking care of your personal life. I find when I normally start slacking with my small business, it usually aligns with other parts of my life that are also in a slump, whether it be your career, your family, your friends, fitness, wellness anything like that all that stuff affects how good of a business owner you are so sometimes all it takes is just taking some time to yourself and focusing on yourself and your personal needs i've been sick for the past week or so so i haven't been able to go to the gym because i just didn't feel up for it and finally today i felt good enough to go i went i had like such a great workout it felt really good to start like moving my body again i got some fresh air which i haven't gotten the past like two three days I ran some errands and it just like feels good to be productive in my personal life to the point where I now feel ready to get back into my small business life. I think a lot of us use our job as like an escape from our personal lives and that's definitely the case for me sometimes. We will have to realize that the problems in your personal life will somehow creep into your small business life and create issues there so it's definitely good to face things head on to take care of whatever needs to be taken care of and to prioritize your own self. So that felt good this morning to just do that and just focus on myself. Also the fact that I got that one project done yesterday as well as finished up the candle for um like as a gift that felt really good because now today I feel like I'm not starting off fresh. I feel like I've already got the momentum going, taken out the sewing machine, I've made a candle, and now I just gotta keep that going. So the next thing I'm gonna do is start planning the upcoming weeks and months for any of the small business things that I wanna do. For me, that involves making a list of YouTube videos I wanna put out, coming up with a list of products that I want to try to make and potentially release, make a to-do list of basic admin things like paying taxes, updating my website, checking out my analytics, checking out ads and things like that. It also includes planning content creation, which is definitely the toughest part of this entire thing for me. I'm definitely not the best at making content, especially pictures for Instagram um, for my small business. I'm pretty decent at vlogging nowadays, but when it comes to like still frames, I'm just like, how do I capture my entire vision in one picture? So I'm going to plan that out, hopefully make it easier for myself, like my future self in the upcoming weeks by having this plan down so I don't have to think too much about what needs to be done. Also, I'm so sorry for my voice. I'm trying to get over it. I had a lot of people ask me what I used to organize my small business thoughts and needs um, and the answer is a bunch of different sites and apps. As you saw in my last video, I use Inventora to manage all my inventory. That's kind of a new addition to my process, but I really like them. So I use that to manage how much inventory I have as well as how many materials I have left to make that inventory. I also use it to track how much I'm spending on materials like financially. So that helps a lot. I use Google Calendar, which is like really basic for just managing when I want to film like YouTube videos, when I want to make content for my website, when I want to post YouTube videos, when I want to drop collections and just like scheduling needs. And then I use Notion for pretty much everything else. <laughs> That's where I plan all the details of upcoming collections, materials I may need, um, like little to-dos like getting testers and trials. I also manage my daily to-dos here both for my personal life and for my small business which is really nice because I like when it's all one place. Since I'm one person, all of these to-dos get clumped into 
into the same 24 hours that I have so it's good that it's all in one place so I don't have to like go between a bunch of different like sites to figure out what I need to do for a day and here I also manage like planning YouTube videos I can show you a little bit I don't want to give it all away obviously and also I don't use notion to its fullest potential I know that there are a bunch of really cool things you could do with notion but um, I don't currently do that mainly because I haven't set enough time to like learn all of the cool features but also because I don't really need it to do like too many crazy things so this is what I got for my YouTube videos I have the name of the video or like the name of the topic that I want to like work on this one's getting out of a slump obviously and these are the goal posting dates obviously none of these happened above here I'm going to need to update those dates and then put the status like if I'm scripting something if I'm researching if it's just an idea and I haven't started it yet and then these are the categories because I have a few categories that I like to talk about on my YouTube videos so this one is a small business owner like category and productivity and then also platform YouTube because I do want to get more into TikTok and Instagram so I'm trying to like also incorporate other other types of content on this page as well also I do want to mention that not being super productive is very normal and very acceptable and at all times by no means you have to be like super productive for me being in a slump is about how I like don't actually want to be unproductive and I do want to be more productive and I'm just like in my head too much and I'm too burnt out and it's a place I don't necessarily want to be for too long so that's why I am trying to give myself tips and trying to share tips with you all for how to get out of this headspace. Obviously we all need breaks and we need consistency in our lives so be sure to go easy on yourself and to not think that you have to be at your like 100% every single day that's super unrealistic even though it may not seem that way <laughs> like through my youtube videos it seems like i'm super productive all the time but that's just because i choose to share that and another reason why i wanted to put out this video to show you that like sometimes i'm not always like go 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 so yeah i hope this helped some of you i hope you got a little bit out of it let me know your tips and tricks to get out of slump in the comments i would love to see them i read all my comments obviously i love talking with you all let me know what else you want to see i have so many ideas as you saw in my notion um, and so many more that I haven't written down yet. But I would love to also prioritize making videos that you all like personally like want to see from my channel. So let me know. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.